Crimson Trace announces LaserGuard Pro for today's most popular concealed carry firearms, combining a red or green laser sight with 150 lumen light, taking personal defense to the next level. Available now at your local dealer. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free gun dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. Hi, welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here. The number is 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial Tom Talk Gun. Gets you in here. We're pretty much open lines if you want to talk about uh, your rifle, your shotgun, your handgun, revolver, or semi-auto. Um, weird story coming out of Bend, Oregon. Guy was, uh, it's a kid, but 19-year-old, I think it was 19, uh, got arrested for carrying his air rifle close to a school. But the weird part of the story was they make a a big deal about how he was carrying it. He was taking it over to his buddy's house to show him his new air rifle. But the police said that the problem was he was carrying it in the ready position. That is, he had his you know, hand on the stock and one on the forearm. Like you could just, and the story says, he, he could have just aimed it at any time. Huh. So it really wouldn't have been a problem if he hadn't been holding it that way. Huh. I've not heard of that before. I know everybody's nervous. Everybody's, you know, cautious. Just a weird thing. And, you know, um, here's a thought for you. If you're going to carry your, a long gun through the neighborhood or over to your neighbor's house, even if it's an air gun, especially if it's an air gun that looks like an AR or something like that, you may just want to stick it in a gun case. You know, hard case, soft case, something. People are hypersensitive. And yes, I will argue on the side right there with you to say we shouldn't have to do that. Why, back in the old days, we would just be out on the front porch showing our buddy our guns and we would have a good old time. Yep, absolutely right. Not a problem. We would do that. But people were not hypersensitive about guns the way they are now. And I will say, frankly, the police were not hypersensitive about guns. And when they get a call of a man with a gun, you may have cops rolling up who really are not gun people, who don't know much about guns. So why not be just a little bit smart about it and not invite a problem, not start a problem? You know, it's not a big deal. Get your cool gun case. They even have them that look like tennis rackets. I love those, actually, by the way. Uh, just just a thought for you, if you have any thoughts on that 866-TALK-GUN. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about a brand new book about ARs. And I'm telling you, I've been looking through it. You talk about learning a lot in a hurry. If you have an AR and you're not like an expert, you definitely want to get on board on this one because it has tons of info. We'll be talking with Tiger McKee from Shoot Right Academy when we come back. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. 
Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Battle Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ChopGunTalk.com That's ChopGunTalk.com Smith & Wesson Performance Center Firearms combine old-world hand craftsmanship with modern technology. Carry comfortably and confidently with Performance Center pistols and revolvers. Or take aim with their fine-tuned modern sporting rifles. For unique designs and special features, experienced shooters look to the Performance Center for all their firearms needs. Performance Center by Smith & Wesson. Performance when it matters most. For more, go to smith-wesson.com PC. Every crossbreed holster is handmade based on the design invented by our founder. A Kydex pocket molded around your gun for perfect retention. Leather backing for comfort. Specially designed clips allow you to tuck in your shirt for complete concealment. The highest quality mag carriers and belts sturdy enough to hold any gun. Our holsters come with a lifetime warranty and two-week try-it-free guarantee. Crossbreed. Conceal and carry the cross. Crossbreedholsters.com. It was, I don't know, 15, feels like 15, 20 years ago, may have been that long ago, when uh, a fellow that people had not heard of wrote this book that was hard to ignore. The book was called The Book of Two Guns. It was about using the 1911 pistol and the AR-15 rifle slash carbine in self-defense. And the fellow who wrote it has become one of the best-known firearms trainers in the country, Tiger McKee. And I've pushed that book. I have tried to get people to, to get it because it was just stunning. And now Tiger has a brand new book. He joins us right now. Hey, Tiger, how are you? I'm doing excellent, sir. How are you today? Well, I am great. The new book is called AR-15 Skills and Drills. Learn to run your AR like a pro. You are the pro, not just in running it, but in teaching the AR. Uh, let me ask you this. I mean, obviously, we're going to get into a little bit about what's in the book. What's the, as you have people come through your classes and you work with people either on, uh, in your know, big classes or individual or you know, family groups or couples, what's either the bi- most, the biggest misunderstanding you run into or the biggest area of incompetence with an AR? Uh, there's a couple of areas. One of them is that people don't really understand how the AR functions. And so then they don't really understand how to manipulate it, operate it properly, which means safely and efficiently. And then Hmm. the other aspect would be, and this would apply to almost all firearms, is just shooting the AR accurately. So you have a couple Mm -hmm. of factors there. You're shooting a rifle a little bit different maybe from a pistol that you've been used to. But then also Mm -hmm. the sight system on the AR is set higher than the barrel. So if you have, say, a 100-yard zero, which a lot of people will use, the sights are roughly two and a half inches higher than the actual barrel. So at closer distances, you have to start compensating for that offset. You're aiming at one point, but your shots are going two and a half inches low. And so a lot of people don't understand just basic sighting in of the AR rifle. What is it about the AR? Why do we want, Why would I guess, let me back up. Why would somebody consider having an AR for personal protection? Okay, it's as far as the ergonomics go, uh, Eugene Stoner was a genius. I mean, ergonomically, the AR is, works the best of any of them out there, all the Safety, mag release, all that stuff is in exactly the right place. And then a lot of people kind of look at you funny if you talk about the AR for home defense. But as long as you've got the proper ammo in it, if you did have an errant round, it's going to penetrate less sheetrock, two-by-fours, that kind of stuff that you would find in your home than any of your handgun rounds because that round, the way it's designed, the two, two, three, or five, five, six, whichever you want to look at it, mm-hmm. 
it's designed to either immediately start tumbling and fragmenting or expanding. In either case, it dissipates its energy extremely quickly. So mm-hmm. it's good at stopping threats a lot better than any of your pistol rounds. And then over penetration through walls, that kind of stuff is less of a worry. And for those who don't believe it, trust me, we we have built multiple walls where you have like, you know, two pieces of sheetrock separated by two by fours and then another similar wall and another similar wall. We have never been able to get a 223 to go through the third wall. And every handgun round we shoot, with the exception of a 22 rimfire, will go through all three walls. Yeah, it's really surprising. Now, that doesn't apply to like a 308 or a 76239. Those will go through a lot of stuff before they ever come to a stop. But that 556 or 223 works ideally. All right, and also, I mean, the AR-15 is light. Uh, you can customize it, and that you, know, you get into a good bit of that. I got to tell you, right off the bat, one of the things that I really appreciate about this this new book, and the book is uh, AR-15 Skills and Drills, is tons and tons of photos, and in a lot of them, you show how to manipulate the controls, whichever control you're talking about, right-handed and left-handed, and not just for people who are lefties, but there could be times in the middle of a fight or someplace where you end up having to operate left-handed, right? Certainly. And again, if you know the proper techniques, the AR can be used just as efficiently by someone who shoots left-handed as someone who shoots right-handed. So that's another one of its advantages. Seems to me, you know, and I I came to the AR, AR late. I was a bolt action guy and at first, all the controls were confusing. I mean, there was it was not what I was used to. After you yeah. spend a little time getting to know them, there's only you know, there's like three controls to worry about. Uh, you just have to learn how to operate them. And then, of course, you've got, you know, instead of a bolt handle, you've got a, you know, a handle, charging handle. But it's just a case of spending time and knowing how they work. But it's not, and I mean, this is my toss to you. It's not necessarily intuitive where you would figure out the proper way, for instance, to drop the bolt, to close the bolt, or the proper way to pull back the charging handle. Uh, There are techniques you have developed and other people have developed through trial and error that work. Yes, sir. Um, It's not, and it's like natural instinct, if you want to call it that. It's not really programmed inside of us to operate this rifle. But we're not really programmed to operate chainsaws either. (laughs) You know, but as long as you know what you're doing, how to operate it safely and efficiently, then you can get really good at it. It is a rifle or a platform that you can master uh, with a day or two of training and some practice. And also, it occurs to me that maybe this is a platform where operating it uh, dry without any ammo, just learning where the controls are and how to maneuver it and how to close bolts and how to do things, that might be worthwhile. Yes, sir. Uh, That's one of the big things is uh, that we stress is dry practice. And I talk about Hmm. it in the book. Um, You know, I'll mention in the book it says practice loading and unloading the rifle. The more you handle it, the more you manipulate it, the more better you're going to get at it. And then that's also going to induce confidence in you that, yes, I know how to operate this rifle. No matter what happens, I can take care of it, whether I just need to unload it, reload it, or clear a malfunction. You know, I mean, simple things like, okay, can you load this rifle while you are walking and looking down the street, for instance? I mean, just as an example of... You shouldn't have to stop and look at your gun to reload it. Exactly. Um, Regardless of what you're doing, whether you're hunting with the rifle or you're using it for self-defense, you want to be able to operate it without having or needing to see it because, Mm -hmm. one, if there's something to shoot, you need to be keeping your eyes on that. And then also, especially for self-defense, we know that a lot of this stuff occurs in low-light environments. So even if you try to look, you might not be able to see what you need to see. So we teach operating it 
based on physical confirmation as opposed to visually looking at it. Physical confirmation being you actually are feeling what's going on, even to the point of when you're checking to make sure that there's a round in it, you can actually pull back the charging handle part way and run your finger in there, and you can feel if there's actually a cartridge there. Yes, sir, and that applies to everything from, like, inserting the magazine. If you know the proper technique, you can index it, align it, insert and lock it into place without ever needing to see it. One of the things that we see, you ask about problems a minute ago, is Mm -hmm. that people, when they think about using firearms, they're thinking about brute force or strength or speed, but it's more about balance, sensitivity, awareness, and if you go slow and smooth, you can actually feel what's happening. And once you develop that feel for it, you don't need to see it, and you're becoming extremely efficient at operating the AR. And I've seen you operate, and the the people who work with you who are really good, you never appear that you're in a hurry, but your movements are more what I would call a flow. It's just like they're going where they need to go. They're not moving necessarily fast, although they're moving fairly quickly. But it's, I guess, maybe a lack of uh, extraneous movement. But it's just like everything. The word flow comes to mind when I see you move. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's it. The term I like to use is efficiency. So there's no Hmm. wasted motion. Every action is efficient. And when you're efficient, that means you're getting everything taken care of without making any mistakes. All the movements are short as possible. And it's the same thing if you look at somebody that plays tennis or golf. They look, they make it look easy. But if I go sure. out there and try to hit a golf ball, I might, you know, hit it on the 10th try. <laughs> and it's not going to look real easy, is it? And it ain't going to be pretty either. <laughs> well, uh, I should tell people, uh, Tiger, your uh, your operation is in just outside of Gunnersville, Alabama. Shoot right. By the way, shoot right is s h o o t r i t e dot o r g. Shoot right dot org for the website, and of course, you do all sorts of uh, training there as well as you'll travel and do training. Um, slings. Why would somebody want a sling on an AR? The sling for any long gun, this would apply to the AR, a hunting rifle, shotgun, is like the holster for your pistol. So you need a place to secure it when you're doing other things. The sling allows you to do that as opposed to, say, laying it down. And then I've actually known people that moved a little bit and then they couldn't find their rifle and that's (laughs) never good. Um, but it's like basically yeah. the holster for your pistol. It gives you a place to put that weapon while you're doing other things. How long does it, I mean, obviously it's one of those, you, you can you spend your lifetime mastering it, but in a day or two in your class, you can take somebody from having never shot one to being at least conversant with the rifle and comf- starting to get some comfort level. Would that be correct? Yes, sir, that, and then they're also learning, okay, here's what I need to practice. So what we Uh, tell people is you're not going to learn this in the two or three days that we're spending together, but you'll learn what you need to practice, and then again it gets back to like the dry practice or live fire practice. Those repetitions are when you actually start to learn this stuff. And what we talk about is, The majority of the actions, once you've actually learned something, it occurs at a subconscious level. So you just say reload, and then the subconscious takes over to perform that reload, and you're not even Uh having to think about reloading. It's funny you mentioned I was doing a a class out at um, Gunsight, and we were at the end of the class, five-day class, we're doing uh, El Presidente, and in the middle of doing an El Presidente, I had a malfunction, did a tap rack and kept moving, and I didn't know that I had done it. Exactly. Yes, sir. So, I mean, it basically fixed a malfunction, got the gun back in, in the middle of a drill, and actually didn't hurt my time very much, but that just comes from having, you know, spent five days doing it over and over again and working on it. And that's, you want to achieve that level of, what do you call it, uh, 
unconscious competence? Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, that's, that's you you just get term. stuff done. You don't have to think about it. The, the AR-15 is actually, at, at its heart, it's a simple platform. It has, you know, like four controls. I mean, five maybe if you count the trigger. Uh, there's not a lot to it. But you do need to know where they are and how to operate them. And do you use a thumb here? Do you use a finger here when you're pushing that? How, I mean, simple things that people wouldn't even think about. How do I hold a magazine? How do I insert a magazine? Because there's there's a actually there's a right way, a lot of wrong ways. Would you would you agree? Definitely, everything you do with a rifle, and again, this would apply to any firearm. You want a specific technique. Reg- Guard, there, there's nothing small. You know, the devil is in the detail kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So everything mm-hmm. you do is going to determine whether that step and the ones that follow it are going to be, again, efficient. Yep, exactly right. Well, I, I congratulate you. Obviously, the first book, The Book of Two Guns, is uh, now it is a modern classic among people who are serious about self-defense with guns. And now I think this one is going to become an instant classic, AR-15 Skills and Drills. It's by Tiger McKee. Tiger, uh, where do people get the book? It's from Gun Digest. That's who uh, published it. Yes, sir. They can get it off of our website. And then, of course, Gun Digest has it. But we've got the links right on our website where they can order it. And if they're like your listeners and they mention, hey, I heard this on Tom's program, I would be glad to sign it, all that kind of stuff. Oh, nice. Okay, so shootright.org, S-H-O-O-T-R-I-T-E dot O-R-G. And you can get an autographed copy from Tiger. That's good. And look, I'm just going to tell people, while you're there, go ahead and get uh, Tiger's uh, DVDs and get the Book of Two Guns. Get all of them at the same time. Tiger, congratulations. It is a really, really well done book. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. That means a lot uh-huh. coming from you. Well, you take care. All right. Yeah, just my uh, personal endorsement. When I was in the area one time, I had a half a day. I called Tiger. I said, do you have any time available? He said, yeah. I said, can I come over there and just get a half a day of AR training? Pull, pull the money out of my pocket. Hey, Tiger, that's who I go to. The guy is that good. I've sent a lot of people to him. They say they all say, yeah, the guy really is that good. Tiger McKee, shootright.org. All right, open lines. 866-TALK-GUN. This is Gun Talk. Want your opinion to make a difference? Log on to our website and take the Gun Talk poll. www.guntalk.com Now, once again, opinion-based regular contributor for the Washington Times, here's Tom. Back with you, 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial Tom Talk Gun, get you in here. A lot of things going on. By the way, uh, we're still doing this stunning, unbelievable giveaway. If you go to guntalk.com slash win, pretty easy, guntalk.com slash win, you can see how to enter. The giveaway is, we call it the ultimate gear package. Give it away a new Springfield Armory EMP pistol with a concealed carry contour grip, a new Springfield Armory Saint rifle, their uh, AR, MSR, a Canon gun safe, Crimson Trace link system, which is awesome, awesome. Uh, Crimson Trace Railmaster, Universal Light, 1,000 rounds of 9mm ammo from Protec uh, Ammo, 1,000 rounds of Freedom Munitions, 223. It goes on. Uh, lots of mags, uh, action target dueling trees. I mean, it's, it's just stupid. It's these pack timers, crossbreed holsters, uh, Gun Talk Knowledge Vault, price. I mean, it's just nuts. Um, guntalk.com slash win. And there are several different ways to to enter and when each of them you do, you can enter. It basically enters you another time, so you have more chances. It's kind of a cool package. Let's see here. Modesto, California, line three. Robert's with us. Hey, Robert, what are you looking for? Uh, just the, the truth, <laughs> the straight up about the <laughs> uh, 327 Federal Mag. Oh, okay. I hear it's gone. I hear it's back. I see it this and Ruger took the gun out of production last year. Now it's back on their website. So just your thoughts. I'm out of caliber. Yeah, the, 
it is um, the three three twenty seven Federal is available in at least two different uh, revolvers. The Ruger LCR is chambered for it, as well as the I think it's the GP one hundred or the one hundred one. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, the stainless. Uh, that's the one I like. And Smith made one, yeah. but I don't know if they're making one. It's. Uh, are, are you familiar with the caliber at all? Uh, a little bit. I've talked to a couple guys that had them, and then they sold the guns, and now they're sorry. Oh, you're no kidding. It is. Um, I would. I would tell you. Yeah, that's right. The Henry Repeating Arms also has a rifle available uh, for it. I think it's supposed to come out this month. This is one of those calibers that I was completely wrong about. When it came out, I thought, oh, heavenly days, a thirty-two caliber. Do we really need something like that? What a silly idea. And then I shot it and went, holy smoke. You can shoot in the same revolver, little lightweight 32 H&R loads, little heavier 32 H&R mag loads. And then when you shoot the 327 Federal, it is every bit the same power as a 357 Magnum. I mean, but the only difference is in these small revolvers, you can carry six rounds instead of five. I was, I completely misread this thing when it came out. And I think probably a lot of other people did too. And now they're figuring it out and it's become popular. It's, it's a stellar cartridge. I am very impressed with it. Yeah. I, like I said earlier, I've got 22 to 45. I don't want to go any bigger. And mm-hmm. I'm just kind of out of calibers, 20, 20 guns, 21 <laughs> guns, and I'm, I've, I've got anything I want. Not you interested need, You need in a, a gap. A, That's right. You need something that'll slide right in there in a little bitty gap. So, oh, I don't have a 32. That'd be cool. So, you know what? That's as good a reason as any to buy a gun. I love it. Robert, anyway, they, yeah, they're making them. They're out. Uh, ammo is available from several different outfits these days. Uh, if you're looking for one, I would suggest go ahead and get one. You're going to like it. Let me go to line two. John Adine is with us out of San Antonio. Uh, Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. Hey, John. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I am well. We're talking about uh, the doctor. I've been getting these firsthand reports from a friend of mine, and his wife was put on the list by the VA, it's supposedly inadvertently, by somebody in the doctor's office who checked a box and fighting this. But what he was telling us, was it his doctor saying, don't tell me anything about guns because I have to report that to the federal government. What's the story? What's the uh, Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership uh, info on this? Okay. So as far as the general population goes, there's not a mandate for them to report firearms. However, if they have it in their database, the database is searchable, and they can, they can figure it out. Now, this may be a VA thing. I I don't work in the VA, so I can't really be entirely sure. But certainly Mm -hmm. we know that the Obama administration was not uh, Second Amendment friendly. And so they were doing everything they could do to try to put the screws to gun owners who were, uh, uh, you know, VA patients and to try to find a way to disarm every last one of them if they could. And that's why we had, you know, the, uh, you know, if you had a a payee, all of a sudden, you became uh, unable to own a firearm. And I think this is another way of them trying to push that agenda. Huh. Okay. So where are we now? And I guess the real takeaway, which is the question you probably get every single day, is what should we do if we go to a doctor's office and receptionist, nurse, a form, a doctor ask us about gun ownership? I like your, your approach. I think your approach is perfectly legitimate. You know, in fact, when when I go on other radio shows, I quote you very frequently about, you know, <laughs> it, it's not a sin to lie if they don't have the right to know the truth. And frankly, this is none <laughs> of their you-know-what business, okay? Yes. And so yes. You, as far as I'm concerned, what you said I think is perfectly legit. Of course, you know, the DRGO party line is the, is the thing about the uh, you know, boundary violation, and that's also perfectly legitimate. But you know what? You know, I agree. Let's go with the path of least resistance. You know, yes. The less they need, they know, the less suspicions they have. As far as I'm concerned, you know, if you say I don't have a gun, then, then that, that ends, the, ends the questioning and you keep on going. You move on to the next question on the form. Exactly. And, and check it off. And, I w- and frankly, if somebody gave me that form, I would have no heartburn checking off uh, I don't own a gun. 
Well, you don't own a gun. You own more than one, right? That's absolutely right. I don't own a gun. <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I don't own a gun. In fact, I don't have a gun in my car right now either. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, for those who don't know, Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership, on the Internet, you can get a lot of background information on this issue at drgo.us. That's drgo.us. John, I appreciate you uh, filling us in and giving us the uh, the real skinny on this from the medical office there. That, that's good. And you guys do good work. We really appreciate it. Thank you much. All right. Take care. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Have you ever had a doctor or somebody in a doctor's office ask you about gun ownership? I'm trying to compile this info. So if you have, please let me know. Just dial Tom Talk Gun. We are Agula Ammunition. We believe that getting the most out of your firearm begins with what you put into your firearm. And that's why we only source the best raw materials to manufacture the best ammunition possible. Ammunition that's reliable and dependable, shot after shot. Ammunition that holds nothing back when it comes to performance, quality, and innovation. Yes, ammunition that your guns will downright devour. Guns are hungry. Feed them at AguilaAmmo.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. There's only one place where you can buy that firearm you've always wanted and turn it into your very own. That place is Brownells.com. Now offering a huge selection of firearms from all your favorite brands. Brownells is the spot to buy online. When you're choosing your gun, be sure to look over the enormous selection of parts, accessories, ammo, and more to make that firearm your masterpiece. Brownells.com. Serious about firearms. Uh, during the break, we're doing a little full auto shooting. Well, I'm talking about full auto shooting, but uh, what's wrong with that? It's just, I don't know what it is. It just always brings a smile to your face, doesn't it? JR is in uh, Charleston, West Virginia on 4. JR, what are you looking for here? Uh, Tom, I'm looking for a bipod for a Remington 742 semi automatic. Uh, my buddy's okay. looking for one, and he can't find it, and I told him I'd try to help him. All right. Uh, do you know if he has a sling swivel on his rifle? Yes, sir. Okay. A couple of ways to go, but uh, the guys at Harris Bipod have a special adapter that are, it's made for that. Uh, so I'm looking here. You can get it at uh, Brownells, Cheaper Than Dirt, some other places. But he probably wants to use a Harris bipod because that's like probably 90% of the bipods out there. And there is an adapter made for use on the 742, Model 4, 74, 7400, all of that. So you Mm -hmm. might want to just direct him to that. And either the one that popped up quick was cheaper than dirt. I imagine they have it on the Brownells website. Uh, And actually, I'm looking here. It's called the Harris Engineering Number 3 adapter and uh, it's even available on Amazon. So uh, I would say um, that's probably the way to go. Tom, buddy, you could keep giving us the information and keep us informed. I was talking to the guy that gave, uh, took my call 
And I told mm-hmm. him here in West Virginia, us old mountain boys, we take care of our guns, and we got lots of them. We got <laughs> lots of them. You can imagine I do love West Virginia, how many man. guns in West Virginia. <laughs> I can't, can't imagine, and it's a good thing that nobody knows. That's that's the way it ought to be. Jr. thank you for the call. Roy's on one. He's out of Ohio. Hey, Roy, you're on Gun Talk. What's happening? Hey, buddy. Keep doing what you're doing. I love it. I tell you what. Appreciate it. Um, I was listening to your podcast last week because I got behind, and uh, you mm-hmm. had uh, on your after show, what do you say when somebody asks you, are you carrying? Well, let me mm. just tell you what I do and what works for me. People that I really know and know me well don't even ask because they know I am. When I go out to lunch with somebody I haven't seen for a while, they say, well, Roy, are you carrying? And I say, why do you ask? And they say, well, I was just curious. And I say, okay, would it make you feel better or worse if I was or I wasn't? Uh, and they just look at me, and it's you know, conversation right there, and then we go on. <laughs> I like that. So, well, basically, yeah. you're saying, well, do, would you like me to be, or would you like me to yeah. not be carrying? Exactly, exactly. And I think huh. they probably get the just I am, and don't ask any more questions. But it always ends the conversation right there. <laughs> you, know, you know, for me, I mean, unless you're good friends, and and if the, here's the thing, my good friends never ask me if I'm carrying. What they ask me, Roy, is, "What are you carrying today?" Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> That's the better question. Exactly. That's Just the better them. question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Roy. That's a great comeback. I like that. Uh, yeah. Not. Uh, are you carrying it? What are you carrying? It's kind of like they are always asking the uh, actresses, actors on the uh, runway, you know, who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? So um, who are you carrying? Smith, Springfield, Ruger? <laughs> Matt's in Shreveport on three. Hey, Matt, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom, I got a question. Um, I have one and only uh, local gun, indoor gun shooting range. They're having issues uh, with not taking care of the bullet stops and holes in the ceiling, and you're being able to see uh, sunlight coming in down out the, by the bullet catch, and the ventilation does not work at all. So it's okay. salt and hot in the summertime and freezing cold in the wintertime, and that's the only indoor range here. What, I mean, is there anything that we could do to make yes. him take care of it? No. There, there is something you can do, but not to make them take care of it. What you do is you just don't go there anymore. Well, that's the only indoor range, and our outdoor range is being uh, taken care of. They're uh, rebuilding the mounds and, and all that, so that's the only just, place we well, got I'm, to do. I understand. I I understand. I'm just, you, now, let me ask you this. Has anybody talked to them about it to say, hey, this thing's unsafe? What are you guys going to do about it? We've made multiple, multiple comments. I mean, that, that whole place has been in disrepair for probably 20 years. And that's the only indoor range we got here in town. And so we're going to either shoot or don't shoot. All right, here's here's my suggestion is find a few business people around who would like to really make some money and have them open a new indoor range because there are tons of new people who would love to go to a place the new people who want to shoot will not go to a crummy range that's dirty and unsafe and hot and not air conditioned. But if you opened up a really high quality range, good indoor range with good lighting and good air filtration, and you know it was safe and it was well lit and fun, people will come. So I'm I'm thinking this is a uh, an entrepreneur's dream. If they're doing a bad job, somebody needs to come in and do a good job. Pick up one of those old circuit cities or someplace that uh, they closed down. You can go in and make it a gun range. It already has parking lots. It has lights. It has everything you need. Good to go. Somebody in Shreveport, pick up the ball on this one. They need a good shooting range there.
right back with you. One of the things that, uh, if you have listened to the show for any length of time, you know that it's all about getting along, being courteous, being kind. We, we don't have to agree. In fact, we often don't agree. If you don't like guns, by all means, call. Let me know why. But we're going to be courteous. We're going to be respectful. And if you're not, <laughs> just a heads up, if you're not courteous and respectful to the call screener, you will not be getting on the air. Simple as that. Line one, Adam, he's been respectful and courteous out of Evansville, Indiana. What happened when you went to the doctor here, Adam? Well, uh, luckily we have a good relationship with our pediatrician for our kids. But once we mm-hmm. went in and they were renewing the information for the yearly exams, and they asked, do you have any guns in the house? And I, uh, I looked right at the nurse, and I just told her, I said, you know, we used to have a bunch of guns. But unfortunately, I, uh, I recently lost them all in a tragic canoeing accident. <laughs> and she looked at me, and I just smiled, and she goes, well, good, then I don't ever have to ask that question again. I said, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> just how big was that canoe, Adam? <laughs> A gigantic canoe. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. And then the, 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 now you took it away from the nurse. So she doesn't have to be bothered with that silliness that she's gotten saddled with. Exactly. Oh, God, that is great. I love that. So have they, uh, what do they ask you? How, how does the question come? Uh, basically, they're just running down the list. They, they're acting like they're asking about any other health history type question. You know, they're asking if there's a history of, you know, any other types of diseases. They're asking if they're up to on all of their vaccinations. They ask about uh, any dietary and they mm-hmm. go right into, and, uh, are there any guns in the house? And my wife had gotten the same question, and she was taken aback, and so she didn't know what to do. And uh, she she felt like she goes, what happens if I don't tell them the truth? And I told her, I said, nothing happens. <laughs> nothing. They don't, they don't care. I, I guess that's maybe the one thing that people need to understand is the people in the doctor's office more than likely just don't care. They're just, somebody told them to ask this question, whether it was, in this case, the American Pediatric Association, which has been an anti-gun activist group for at least 30 years, uh, and they have forced pediatricians to put this on their question list. And, and look, I appreciate the call, Adam. Here's, here's the takeaway. Talk to your family members. In many cases, it is going to be the mom who's taking kids to the pediatrician. She needs to know before she goes in, these questions are going to be asked and when you get to this one, you don't blink. You just say no. Do you have any guns in the house? No. And then move on. I mean, like I don't care if you're wearing an NRA hat and a Gun Owners of America sweatshirt and you've got an empty holster on your belt. Uh, you just say no. Just simple. And if, if they were to like lift an eyebrow, you go, no. Next question. Just simple as that. I didn't, Adam, I appreciate the call. Very well done. A tragic canoeing accident. You wouldn't mind telling us exactly where on the lake? Never mind. No, that's a whole, whole different thing. <laughs> the whole line, the whole line that I, and I got this from my dad. He said, you know, I always tell the truth because it makes it easier to remember what you told people. And then he would add, you know, but on the other hand, It's not a sin to tell a lie to someone who's not entitled to know the truth. And that's fun and clever, and you chuckle at it. But then you think about it, you go, you know, as long as it's not a federal law enforcement agency, they can't arrest you for that. (laughs) That's what they got Martha Stewart for. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't lie to any police officer. I would just choose not to answer a question if I didn't want to go there. But anybody else, none of your business is kind of confrontational, why not just, you don't have to tell the truth if it doesn't serve you any good. I'm not talking about lying or I'm not talking about cheating or stealing. That's a whole different deal. But in this case, if they ask you a question they're not entitled to know the answer to, it's like somebody asking how much you you make. None of your business. I make $12 a year. Earn every bit of it. We'll be right back. 